In today's video, we're going to have a look at some of the events that have caught our eye in the first quarter of 2023 in and around the Middle East. And the subjects that we're going to cover include the third discovery uh, in the Black Sea, offshore Turkey, a new gas field coming online in Oman, big plans that Saudi Arabia has outlined for a major expansion. And similarly, in the neutral zone, the area between Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, more expansion plans. Abu Dhabi's busy with more and more rigs coming in and major developments ahead. And finally, uh, we'll have a look at a major project, production enhancement uh, in Iraq. So there will be a, an emerging theme uh, in this region. It's got nothing to do with Wally, who featured in our recent video. But have a look at and see if you can spot the emerging trend. I'll give you a clue. It's along the lines of uh, comparing and contrasting uh, government energy policies. So uh, let's start with Turkey. So on the map here, we can see the approximate location of the three gas discoveries out in the western part of the Black Sea. And there's been a discovery in each of the years 2020, 21 and 22. This is the first of which was uh, Sakaya, due to come on in the first quarter of 2023. We haven't heard that's happened yet. It is due to come on about 10 million cubic meters of gas per day and then ramping up all the way to a plateau of around about 40 million cubic meters per day by 2026. Now this is huge. In fact, between Amstra and Sakaya, it's been reported there's about one trillion cubic meters of gas initially in place uh, across those two fields. And then the latest discovery here, right in the uh, fourth quarter of 2022, and kind of reported into January 2023, was Takuma, apologies for the pronunciation, which is reported to be of the order of 58 billion cubic meters. Now, we are aware of the fact that uh, the earthquake um, may have impacted the timing for uh, first gas at Sakaya. There's the flow line shown on the map there. And here's a quick look at what we have in Trove. Uh, so lots and lots of information on Sakaya, a lot of uh, maps and descriptions of the project and our understanding of, of what's been happening in the area. Amstra, um, similarly, we have a lot of information and less so for Takuma, but um, you can see we'll be building that as we go forward in time. Now, we understand the first gas at Sakaya. There were project delays. Some of the workers had to return to their homes um, to, to look after family in the wake of the uh, 6th of February 2023 earthquake. Um, that was in the southeast of Turkey, and to date, it's reported that over 57,000 people were actually killed, and over a quarter of a million properties were either damaged or destroyed. Now, there's been very little industry press coverage, but we understand that the impact of the earthquake was that it did actually cause or induce a submarine landslide, and that actually caused some damage to the flow line. So that's probably slowed things down. And now, uh, highlighting some recent announcements uh, in Oman. And when we look here, it's a new gas field that's come online. It's the Mabruk Northeast field, which is going to start gas production. Now, it's in Block 10 here, uh, just to the west of the Salrul gas processing plant, where it's going to be tied back to. It's about uh, 400 kilometers from uh, Muscat, shell operated. Anticipate that by uh, second half of 2024, this field will be producing half a billion standard cubic feet of gas a day. So it's going to be a big producing field. It's going to be processed at Sarul, which is part of the uh, OQ gas network. Now, moving on to news from the uh, Amman offshore, and this is from Masira Oil, part of the Rex International Group. And here's the location. So Block 50 is here offshore, Oman, and just around about here. Block 50, so it's the Yumna field, uh, successful work over uh, changing out an ESP on the Yumna 3, adding 400 barrels a day. And the Yumna 4 well was a success in the Aruma with 9.6 meters of net oil pay and flowed uh, just over 4,000 barrels of oil per day. The sidetrack doesn't look to have been quite quite as successful targeting the Kofi uh, carbonates, but the tool became stuck, so limited information. They did cut a core and they're awaiting the pora perm, but yeah, not quite as good a result as uh, we might have hoped for, but uh, time will tell. Moving on down then, and really kind of one of the biggest newsworthy 
items that came out in the first quarter 2023 was from uh, Saudi Arabia. And it's basically looking at Saudi's plans. Now, they're talking about uh, 45 to $55 billion budget for Saudi Aramco in 2023, with about 60% being spent upstream. Now, they are targeting to produce 13 million barrels of oil a day by 2027 and that's the sustainable capacity and they've identified the fields where they're going to actually add incremental production and you see on the map here they are being highlighted so the four of the fields are offshore and one of them damam is onshore now, Safanaya, we did a video on that recently, uh, quite some time ago. We did a, a video entitled The World's Largest Oil Field, which is all about Gawa. So if you add all these together, I mean, there's over 3 million barrels of additional production across the piece, including the 50% increase in gas production capacity by 2030. So that's an additional 3.7 BCF of gas processing capacity. And the places they're coming from are here down in the south of Gawa to the centre of Gawa. And the final one, Tanajib, is actually the plant that Berry is tied back to. In terms of unconventionals, this spend is not going to be all over this year, but the Jafora program, that's a big source rock that they're trying to frack and actually get production out of. Haven't seen much reported on this of late, but this could potentially be very, very large. So we'll be keeping an eye open for any news of how that's developing as we go forward. We'll now move north to Kuwait, or rather the neutral zone in between Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. Now, in the neutral zone, uh, you can see there's two maps here, and, and these maps are actually uh, quite uh, geopolitical. Here, uh, Dura or Dora, um, you can see, is shown wholly within the neutral zone in this uh, particular slide. In this map here, you can see it extends across through Kuwaiti waters and then over into Iran waters. Now, the other fields that are in the zone we'll deal with first, which is the Kafji field operated by the Saudis and Kuwaitis uh, together. Onshore, there's the Wafra oil field. That's back online after being shut in for about four years due to uh, operational disputes. It's operated by uh, a Chevron subsidiary. Currently, these fields produce a little less than 200,000 barrels of oil per day, but the plan is to actually increase production to 500,000 barrels of oil per day in the next few years. Now, the Dora and Dura we looked at on the map, they do straddle the international boundaries here. Saudi Arabia and Kuwait are very keen to move ahead with the development. Iran, on the other hand, they describe the development as being illegal, so uh, definitely needs to be some uh, negotiation and some agreement reached here so that the efficient development of this field can move ahead. Moving to Abu Dhabi and the Adnok uh, Drilling Chief Executive, he's come out with a statement in around about middle of March 2023 saying that by end 2024 they expect to have 142 rigs. Now, we actually did a video on Adnok's rig program and uh, the plans that they had a few months ago and that's on our YouTube channel. But this is a major increase now to having 142 rigs operating for one company. It's massive. Total Energy have been busy acquiring assets or acquiring more in some assets, and uh, details of that are in our trove. Now moving to Iraq, and it's the uh, the southern part of Iraq that we're going to look at here. And here on the map, you can see the region, and this is something that was just come in the news at the start of April 2023, and it's uh, essentially that the $10 billion gas growth integration project is going to move ahead and uh, that's uh, Total Energies with Basra Oil Company and Qatar Energy. Now the idea is that uh, we're going to capture flared gas from three of the fields and uh, use that gas uh, for power generation. Over and above that going to build a, a seawater treatment plant for uh, improving oil recovery from the oil fields and that's known as the uh, the common seawater supply project and now ExxonMobil were, were in that project but pulled out in uh, back in 2021 but now it, it looks like it's going to move ahead uh, there's also plans to build uh, one gigawatt of uh, solar power in this region as well so major project major expansion there and uh, there's some of the oil fields that we have in uh, southern Iraq, uh, West Kurna, Rumela, Luez, and Zubair. Um, and that's the sort of information that you're going to find in Trove. Um, what conclusions do we draw from all these news stories? 
So just to put it in context, you can see that this is the, the data from the BP Statistical Review. And uh, in total, uh, across Europe back in 2021, there was... Uh, 3.42 million barrels of oil per day. Well, what we've shown in the numbers up above, in the region, there are going to be incremental ads within the Middle East area in excess of that number, producing more than the entirety of Europe. And that's going to be the ads that are going to be made over the next few years. So uh, takeaways. Well, certainly some governments in, in Europe in particular and other parts of the world, they're very much focused on net zero and transition issues. And, and a lot of projects are, are kind of getting slowed down or deferred. Whereas uh, we can clearly see that in the Middle East, uh, there's some major expansion plans for, for oil and gas. So what will happen? Well, we predict the return of OPEC dominance and, uh, of course, with that, uh, price control. So what does this do for the security of supply issue? Now, last time we looked, there's only one atmosphere, so we can clean the skies above Europe. But uh, if in other parts of the world we're still actually having carbon dioxide emissions, then it's not really going to help us getting to net zero. Just an aside here, we look at Trove, we've recently done an assessment and if you actually stacked all the pages that we have in Trove, about a quarter of a million, um, we stack them up, it would be about 82 foot high or getting on for six London double-decker buses stacked one on top of that. That's a, a big pile of paper. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.